Purposely. Your life, God's purpose. Listen at Purposely.com. Hey friend, I'm Julie Lyles Carr, and this is the All Mom Does Podcast. We are in a summer series on mental health and wellness. We originally aired this series back in the summer of 22. We wanted to bring it back. We brought back our favorite episodes from that series, and we actually threw in an episode that was not originally in that series because there's such great stuff in there that I want you to hear. So buckle up, get ready to think about the next 180 days, the last six months of the year, and how you can go there from a place of health and vibrance of following Jesus. I'm so glad you're here. Take a listen. Hey there, I'm Julie Lyles Carr of the All Mom Does Podcast, where we are in a series on mental health and mental wellness. Let's jump right into the next episode. on the All Mom Does podcast. I have Kristen Weatherall with me, and she's going to talk to us about a topic that, you know, when we kicked off this entire new series on mental health and wellness, it was what I raised my hand and said, I am definitely a feeling this. So we're going to connect those dots for you today. Kristen, thanks so much for being with me. Oh, it's a great pleasure. Thanks for having me. So let's make sure that the listener gets introduced to you. Tell us where you're from. Tell us about your family. And I want to know if you're a coffee or a tea person. So just you just yes. jump in and you unpack that for me. Yes. Well, I'll answer your last question first. I am a coffee person, I although I do drink tea. But if I had a choice, first thing in the morning, give me that cup of coffee. Yeah. I'm, absolutely. I'm on decaf now, but still I identify as a coffee person. So. Yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm married to Brad, who is a pastor at our church. And we've been married uh, coming up now in eight years, which I can't believe. We have two little kids. Uh, my daughter is four and a half. My son is two. And yeah, our lives are very full. I mean, you you know how it is. It's uh, it's never never dull moment here in the Weatherall household. I'm a mom during the week. I, I stay home full time, and then when I have opportunities, I write, which I just absolutely love. I love to open God's Word and and point out what's there and help people see it. And you know, Lord willing, love the Lord more and, and live by it. So love writing too. And you are from an area that I hold near and dear to my heart in Chicago land. My oldest right. daughter lives there. And as part of this series, we actually also had an opportunity to interview Jeannie Stevens, who has a new book coming out called What's Here Now, which is an interesting episode. So you guys are you guys are practically neighbors as far as I'm concerned. Oh, not nice. that Chicago is not massive and huge and you know, you guys may not know each other at all. But I'm like, oh well you're all from Chicago. You must all be friends. So Yeah. Isn't it funny how we think that way? I know. <laughs> no. Chicago is huge. Yeah, it is. It really is. It's such a great place. I just love it. Now I don't want to string the listener along too long because I want to jump back to what I referred to at the very beginning. Your book came to me at a time where I went yeah, that is something that resonates me and a, and a, with me and a challenge that I'm feeling right now. You provided a statistic that I think is really fascinating. And that statistic is that 41% of moms report feeling extremely burned out. And then 51% who are working outside of the home say they feel that way. And I would have to think that it's even possible that we're going to see those statistics rise even more as we have an opportunity to see what really took place during the pandemic, how people were feeling. This idea of being just fried. I actually had the opportunity to meet with someone that I had worked closely with in ministry last week for the first time uh, since the pandemic happened. She and I got to sit down and just have some time to talk. And she reminded me that even previous to the pandemic, I was saying things like, I'm feeling really crispy. <laughs> But yeah, I was like, oh, I forgot that I said that. And that kind of correlates to, you know, I'm getting crispy. I'm getting crispy, burned out. Okay. So yeah, maybe I was self, I was self-diagnosing even back then. But I do think it's important first to identify what we're calling burned out. So how do you think about it when somebody says to you, I'm starting to feel really burned out, or you start looking at the statistics that are coming across that we're seeing a lot of now with people saying they're burned out even as we are heading into what a lot of people were longing for, which was kind of being able to get back out there, some of us are going, oh, wait a minute. I don't know that I was in the best headspace before all this started. <laughs> and so here we are now. So how do you identify what it means to be burned out? Yeah. Man, well, when I think about that, especially in my own experience, I think about 
kind of coming to the end of myself and no longer having what I what I need to do what I'm called to do mm-hmm. in terms of my own strength and my own resources. So I've come to a place where, you know, my resource bin is empty. My tank is is low, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I think it has a lot to do with just feeling like you've come to the end <laughs> and I don't have anything more to give. So that that's what I think about when I think of burning out. Right. I love that designation because there are those things that we continue to do be- just because we have to do them, but it's like joy has left the building. We don't feel as engaged anymore. And it's, I heard someone say recently, and I thought this was interesting, that burnout is different than depression. That in depression, you can almost hit a place where you just simply can't take one more step. With burnout, you keep taking the steps. You you just keep getting up and doing the thing you've got to do. It's just that the passion for it and the full technicolor of it and the soundtrack that should go with some of these things in our lives is missing. Does that resonate with you? Oh, I think so. And I think a lot of of workers feel that. A lot of moms feel that. Um, especially when your when your job involves something that is twenty four seven or very close to it. So, and, and when you're a parent, you don't have the option of being off the clock. You don't. <laughs> Even if your kids aren't with you in the moment, they're on your mind. You know, they're 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 weighing on your heart. And so, I think probably all work involves it to a point. But I, I, that resonates with me so much. You know, this, this idea of, oh my goodness, I'm doing all this work. You know, my hands are so, so busy and I can't stop because I have to keep little people alive. But man, my heart's just not in it today. You know, Kristen, too, and one of the antidotes that we throw out there a lot of times is this idea of, well, you just need a breather. Just go take a day away to roam Target or just have a moment to go do something that you enjoy for a little bit or go for a run or have lunch with that friend. And those things do help. And I have to say, as I was realizing my own crispiness, I was trying to engage more of those things intentionally, but they didn't necessarily fix what was going on. Do you think sometimes we're trying to patch over the burned out places in our lives with more activity <laughs> that we think is yeah. going to help. Yeah. I, I mean, I resonate, that also resonates with me. I remember at the beginning of the pandemic when everything shut down and we couldn't do anything anymore and I couldn't schedule us anymore <laughs> right. and I couldn't see people anymore. That shook me more than anything else. And it's it just exposed in my heart this this perpetual need for movement this perpetual need for action. I'm actually super terrible at rest. And so I think that those things can be really good gifts. You know, if we receive them as rest, I think we have to ask, are they actually restful for me? But I don't think that they're like this, you know, end all be all solution. Um, I think that they're good gifts, but I don't think that they're an ultimate thing. I like that designation of the difference between a gift, a moment, but a true solution. I find too that as a mom and as a woman, when I hear people say, well, it's impossible to multitask, <laughs> well, then come over and hang out with me because I've been multitasking for a long time. <laughs> it was the mm. only way that I knew to keep us moving forward. And when I take a look at that level of activity, it was driving the kids to the next thing while on the business call, while also my mind keeping track of the fact that I needed to run back by the pharmacy and pick up whatever. I mean, I have known no other existence as a woman and as a mom than to multitask all the time. And so even in times, Kristen, that I would tell you that I was trying to slow the roll of how much stuff we were doing, Mm -hmm. I was still finding even in those moments, and I was doing it during the pandemic when our schedule eased up, but I found I was still trying to cram so much into every moment. What level do you think multitasking, even when multitasking feels incredibly necessary, What level does that play in this sense of burnout? Well, I sometimes wonder, you know, multitasking can be necessary or switch tasking or whatever you want to call it. You know, all mom does, right? It's all all of these things that we have on our plate. I once heard somebody say, we don't have a plate, we have a platter. Like there are so (laughs) many things on our platter. And that is something that, that God in his kindness has called us to do, you know, and that's just a wonderful stewardship to be able to work for for our families and for the Lord ultimately. But I sometimes wonder for myself if 
like we mentioned before, if keeping busy is a cover up for my lack of satisfaction in the Lord. Mm. And so um, because I'm not actually sure that uh, his promise is true when he says he's going to provide me life and life abundant, I'm kind of over here just trying to figure out if I can find that life somewhere else. And it's actually a little bit scary to trust him. Right. (laughs) It's a little bit scary to lay down all the other things that vie for my attention, that make me feel important, and trust that he's the one who is my identity at the end of the day when I rest my pillow, my head upon my pillow at night. So I think some of it is necessary. Some of it is, you know, the joyous part of the work that we're doing. And I think some of it is probably um, the frantic, self-driven slash, you know, culturally influenced need to be someone, to fill ourselves with contentment. And so I think we need to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. It seems to me too, that in the topic of multitasking, even when it feels or switch tasking, even when it feels incredibly necessary just to do the things that need to get done, it prevents us from feeling present. And I'm always 14 steps ahead. I'm not necessarily in this moment because of the level of multitasking that I'm doing. Now, I want to talk about this very tenderly, this next thing, because I served for many years on a church staff. You are married to a pastor, I'm sure, exceptionally involved in the life of your family's church. And churches run on the lifeblood of people who are willing to volunteer their time and spend time doing a variety of things. And yet part of where I think sometimes as members of faith communities, can we get confused that when we talk about finding satisfaction in God, finding connection with God, letting God be the source that we're going to when we're tired, when we're trying to do things out of our own effort, do we need to be cautious that that is a different thing than being up at the church building all the time and volunteering for everything? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think our tendency to... To, you know, to seek purpose, to um, to fill our time, to, to even distract ourselves can infiltrate the realm of the church and serving. I think something that has been helpful to me as a pastor's wife and as a mom, you know, I've been spending a lot of time in the Gospel of John lately, and um, I've been really helped by two things. One, Jesus's unwavering focus on doing his Father's will. You know, he says, my, my food is to, the, is to do the will of the one who sent me. And so we're not called to um, please man. Are we called to serve? Absolutely. But I think the core question is, is our motive to do God's will? And so I think if we're spending time with him, if we're in his word, if we're, you know, surrounding ourselves with his people who can speak his truth into our lives, I think we'll have a clearer sense of what that is. How do you want me to serve, Lord? So I'm not just frantically, you know, pouring forth all my efforts and getting burnt out, even in the realm of serving the church. The second thing is is an account at the end of John where Peter, you know, is is concerned about what the disciple John is doing and what Jesus has planned for him. And Jesus looks at him and I'm sure, you know, lovingly says, Peter, what is that to you? You follow me. You know, and so I think that that is a really wonderful uh, command and calling for us is to say, don't look, don't look side by side. <laughs> look at me, look at the Lord and follow me. And, um, you know, like I mentioned, we can receive counsel from friends and, and wise folks um, about what that might mean for us. But I think that's the heart of it. You know, we're not, we're not serving in order to please people in order to even please ourselves. We're serving to please the Lord and to bring Him glory. Sure, a lot of kids go straight from high school into college. Fine. But guess what? Each of your kids is an original. And sometimes the path that other people take It's not the right one for them. I'm Julie Lyles Carr, the host of the All Mom Does podcast. I'm a mom of eight kids, and we have been through a series of launches recently. And I have to tell you, with each of the kids, there have been different paths they've taken. That path to going into adulthood, that path into figuring out their next. If you have a recent high school graduate, I want you to know about Adelphia Discipleship School. This is amazing. I think this is so incredible. 
it is a program that acts like a gap year, but in a really guided and beautiful way. Let's face it, studies are showing us that nearly 75% of young Christians are drifting away from their faith after high school. And I think some of that has to do with they're just trying to figure out who they are. They're not sure what their direction's going to be. With Adelphia Discipleship School, they have the room, they have the ability, they have the pause to take a breath, remember who they are, and get the guidance for what their next is going to be. Adelphia Discipleship School is located in the heart of Ravensdale, Washington. Washington. And again, it's more than just a gap year program. It's a journey, a transformative journey for young adults who are wanting to deepen their relationship with Jesus. And check this out. This is this is amazing. Adelphia provides a tuition-free experience through a work internship with Lake Retreat Camp. That's right. Having your high school graduate, your young adult go to Adelphia, attend Adelphia, it will cost you absolutely nothing. So whether you are the parent of someone who is trying to figure out their next, maybe that's you. Maybe you're a recent high school graduate. You're trying to figure out what you want to do in your next season of life. I want to encourage you to check out Adelphia Discipleship School. It's going to help you grow in your identity in Jesus. And the applications for their fall classes are open now, but spots are limited. So I want you to get in there and start talking to Adelphia today. Don't miss out. Call 4 425-432-4293. That's 425-432-4293. Or visit adelphiaschool.com to find out more. It sounds to me that one of the things we need to be on the lookout for in the phenomenon of feeling crispy or feeling burned out is comparison. And I know that we talk about this a lot in in the female space and how we are bombarded more than ever with things that can be comparison items when it comes to social media and all of those things. But I have to tell you, Kristen, in my early motherhood, we didn't have social media. And I've said this before. I'm sure the listener will (laughs) probably remember if they've been a longtime listener of the podcast. I, I felt bad enough just getting... Southern living once a month (laughs) in terms Uh, of what I thought my house should look like and all of the things. And I do wonder if part of our burnout comes from that trap, just like you're referring to in scripture of looking at what God's doing in someone else's life and feeling like that's the thing we're supposed to achieve. And so then we're piling more and more on far more that can then can fit in a 24 seven model. Do you see that? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's one of the primary influences toward discontentment, (laughs) uh, envy, jealousy, restlessness that I see in myself, in my own heart. I met with a pastor's wife, you know, several months back, and she also raised her kids in the era, you know, pre-social media. And she said, oh, she said, I just don't envy you guys at all because you have so many, you know, wonderful resources at your fingertips, but also so many options. And she's like, how do you, how do you sort through it all? (laughs) And I just said, it's so hard. It is so hard to not feel like you're not living up to expectations. You're not, you know, being mom enough. You're not crafting with your kids well enough or putting them in the right activities or schooling them in the right ways. Um, And so I think it's a major influence. And I think that it's dangerous and we have to be really on guard for how the internet and social media could be could be contributing to burnout. I think that we need to take breaks for that reason too, and give ourselves time away <laughs> from looking side to side. I like the way you frame that because so often I think that we make these influences like HGTV and social media and all of the things, we make it the evil. And, and obviously there are things that we know that those tools can be used for evil means, but you're right. It's really sometimes just about all the options that exist and feeling like we need to hit every option. I laugh at myself because I take a look at something, and this is a very surface level, but I can take a look at a house that seems very, very contemporary. I'm like, ooh, I love that. And then I'll take a look at a house that's a farmhouse and I'll go, oh, I love that. And then I'll take a look at a house that is more this grand millennial style. I'm like, oh, I like that. Because there are just so many great options. Instead of just honing in on the one thing, I'm swirling around trying to do all these things. And that's just a really apt metaphor. You're right for the ways that we continue to try to grapple and push things into our lives 
out of this place of feeling like we've got to encompass all of the options. That's a really great delineation between those two things. million Americans under the age of 65 are uninsured. 32.8 million. And a lot of those people don't have insurance because of the cost or they don't have access to it through their work or because they're self-employed and haven't found an affordable option. I found a great solution I want you to know about. One that is helping so many families have top quality healthcare offerings at an affordable price. Altrua HealthShare is a membership of like-minded, health-conscious people. The Altrua HealthShare membership shares in each other's medical costs and has features like pooled office visits, telemedicine, telecounseling, prescription discounts, and more. If you want to see how much you can save on your healthcare costs, go to familyhealth.family. I think you'll find, just like I did, that Altrua HealthShare can give you the peace of mind you're looking for when it comes to taking care of your family's healthcare needs. So go to familyhealth.family and let them know that I sent you. Altrua HealthShare, where we believe in caring for one another. You touch on in some of your writing that part of our issue too, and this has been something that really I saw start coming into fullest flame maybe about 15 years ago, is this idea of grit, grind, hustle, push, do all the things. And people who really, that is their platform. That is what they are pounding all the time. And now that we have all these great options as women, we need to be doing all these things and we need to be pushing ourselves so hard. How, I mean, there's the obviously core, there's the obvious correlation between being burned out and feeling like you're just having to work, 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 work all the time. But how did, how does the messaging of that kind of a culture And it feels like it's specifically toward women. I don't know that it's really changed that much in tone for men. How does that messaging toward women lead us to a place where we feel like we're less than, where it reduces our satisfaction, where it creates a disconnect between ourselves and our children or ourselves and our churches or ourselves and our homes? How does that happen? Yeah, well, I think that message is demanding from us something that we can never give. It's calling us to be something that God never called us to be which is, you know, infinite, omnipresent, omniscient. It's all, it's all of these lies that, that social media and other platforms and, uh, you know, digital opportunities, whatever you want to call them, can make us believe are true about us. You know, I can be everywhere all the time. Only God can be those things. And he never called us to that. When he created us, he actually created us with limits. And those limits are for our blessing so that we will actually turn to him and not to ourselves, and not to all of these other things. Um, so absolutely, I think this. I think the culture of hustle has deeply influenced us toward burnout in what we're doing. And I think it's caused us to not only elevate the self, so how can I become greater, but it's caused us to be tempted to forget, you know, believers who, who love the Lord, that the way up is actually the way down. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, the God of all the universe, Jesus, who had every right to stay on his heavenly throne, actually condescended. He came down and he clothed himself in human flesh in order to serve his people. That is actually the definition of greatness, according to him. You know, in, in John 12, he says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone but if it dies, it bears much fruit. So dying feels like death, right? <laughs> like it's, it's not a natural thing for me to want to die to my own ambition and desires and instead to say, Lord, I trust you with what you desire for me. But Jesus is telling us that it's going to bear a ton of fruit in our hearts, you know, for his glory. And, and that can look different for everyone, whatever that fruit may be. But I think we've, I think we've believed the lie that greatness equals more. More, 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 um, when actually it, it means becoming less and and following in, in the example of Christ and trusting in his life that's being lived through us by the Spirit. You know, it's like we can only serve joyfully in what we're doing day in and day out if we're doing it through the power of the one who has served perfectly on our behalf. I got to confess, Kristen, I'm the first one to... Look at the idea of being burned out, feeling disconnected, having too much on my platter, and to start looking for tools. 
I need a better planning system. I need a label maker. I need better containers. (laughs) If I could just get my pantry color coordinated, then everything would be fine. And those things can make us feel better. But you take what is going to feel like a really counterintuitive approach in your new book, Humble Moms, How the Work of Christ Sustains the Work of Motherhood. It's a beautiful book. The cover is just gorgeous. And I have to tell you, the cover attracted me, but it was the combination of the title with the idea of burnout. And then you're saying humble moms. And that almost seems to be counterproductive in a sense, because in some ways, I think as women, we feel like, I feel like I'm being humble. I'm doing all the things to take care of everybody and I'm fried. So I'm really curious to hear the way that you define what it means to be a humble mom and how that becomes the thing that is good medicine toward our burnout for those who feel like they're already living in a place where they're already ignoring their own needs and putting themselves last in the line and all of those things. How did you make that correlation? Because it's it's such a beautiful way of looking at it, but it doesn't seem obvious at first in a sense. Yeah. Well, so the story behind the whole book is that I was, you know, in my own trenches of motherhood and and trying to understand this disconnect between my hands and my heart. So I'm so busy all the time, but I feel so weary and I love my kids, but this is so hard and I don't always like what I'm doing. Um, So what what is God calling me to in these moments, you know, in in this in this um, really long season that I'm going to walk through as a mom? And um, the passage that I was reading, I think I was just in my Bible reading plan, was Philippians 2, where Paul is talking about um, the humility of Christ. He says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. So um, that sounds like moms, right? We are constantly putting aside self, or so we think, to care for the interests of others. But notice he's talking about the heart there, right? He's not just talking about what we're doing. He's talking about why we're doing it. And then he says, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. And then he goes on to talk about all that Jesus did as a humble servant. You know, he he lived this perfect life. He died and then he rose again. And now he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And someday every knee will bow to him. And I remember looking at this and saying, holy cow, the humility of Jesus runs throughout his entire ministry. So not just the atonement, not just that he died for me, but that he came for me down into the flesh, that he um, ministered on this earth in a humble spirit. Yes, he died to take his people's place um, and rose so that we would have life. And he's serving me right now at the right hand of the Father. And when he comes back to take me home to glory, he's going to do it himself. He's going to serve me forever. And this idea of the God of all the universe being such a humble servant like blew my mind. <laughs> yeah. And I had just never really meditated on this before. And so um I'm probably, you know, rabbit trailing here and losing track of your original question, but I think that that's what matters so much. When we get to, you know, the what is humility as a mom? It's not just, you know, grumbling while I kind of set aside what I'm doing to care for my kid. It's that I am doing all things, whether gl- glamorous or not, to the glory of God because he sees me and because he is the one serving me as I serve my kids. So we're not just talking about the things that we're doing, but the heart behind them and beneath them, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And it seems to me that this combination, if we look at burnout as sometimes having those fingers into it that have to do with how we're publicly demonstrating how we're living our life and how we're handling our kids and all the places we're trying to get to and all of the things And that can lead to burnout, no doubt, just being on all the time for everybody. This beautiful idea that to be reminded again that the greatest among you will be the one who serves. And not to the place where we're talking about crossing boundaries and not to discourage the mom who feels like she's scrambling a thousand miles an hour and is really struggling to make any inroads. But that idea that you are seen. And what you are doing does count. 
And the beautiful point you made that we were not designed to be limitless in this life. And that is a message that is hard for those of us who are really wanting to grow and do things and have big dreams. We don't like somebody saying there actually are limits in this life. One of them is simply time, 24-7. And I will tell you, Kristen, I have battled that for so long. I have not wanted to believe there are only 24 hours in a day and seven days a week. And I can remember going through a book many years ago now, but the author had you walk through and write down everything that you did in a day and give it an assignment of time. And then she also said, now you also need to add in seven hours for sleep and an hour somewhere of personal care, just hygiene, getting dressed, that kind of thing, and eating meals. And what is the time signature that you come up with? And I think mine was 36 hours. (laughs) Uh Yeah. And it was this whole, you know, awareness all of a sudden of going, But God designed human beings to need sleep and to need maintenance. And so there have to be things on these lists that are not mine to do. And that was humbling and it was healing. That's that correlation I think that you make that is really powerful is we have to be humbled enough to understand that when we hit that place of burnout, there are probably things on the list that aren't ours to do. Now, what encouragement do we give a mom who may be in a really challenging season in her marriage or maybe needing to care give for a parent or for a mom who has a child who is differently abled and that child requires an intense level of care and there just aren't the finances and the support to help come around? What do we say to that mom who she does her list and her list is not necessarily replete with both the chores and the chosen things that she wants to do and achieve? Hers is just front to back, truly in a season of scrambling and trying to take care of. And her burnout comes from something that's a very different place. What do we say to that mom in this moment where there may not be things that can come off the list? And it isn't about comparison. Two things come to mind. Um, one is something that my senior pastor said once in a sermon about John 10, 10, where Jesus says, I've come to give them life and life abundant. He said, Jesus has more to give to you than you have yet to receive from him. And so I'm not going to pretend to know what that mom is feeling and doing and walking through. You know, I have my own responsibilities and my own level of weariness, um, and joy over here. But, uh, when there are no seeming resources, you know, tangible things that I can hold on to to get me that rest or that help. I think you have a really unique, blessed opportunity that others may not realize that they need to run with all of your might to Jesus Christ and to cast yourself upon him and to really trust that promise. And then to ask of him, to plead with him, to give what he's promising okay, Jesus, you say that you have more to give me than I have yet to receive. Would you give it? <laughs> I, I I have to do another day. So I don't need just strength that I can, you know, come up with on my own. I need you to give me supernatural strength today. And then watch him come through, you know, ask him for eyes to see his presence. Ask him for eyes to see uh, the answers to your prayers and know that, you know, th- this is not only the God of all, but the man of sorrows who clothed himself in flesh and he knows what it is to be burdened. He knows what it is to be with broken people, with the suffering. He knows what it is to suffer. And um, I think that that also brings a ton of comfort just to know that Jesus is not just high and mighty, kind of like, well, you just do this thing up here because I'm commanding you to, but um, he's near, he's next to you. He actually walked with you through it so that you would know that you're not alone. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing I would say, um, I would just beg you, if you're not part of a local church, to be part of a local church, because there you will find help. You will find the hands and feet of Christ. I cannot adequately express in words what a gift our church has been to us in a really hard season, you know, various hardships, but they have truly been the compassion of the Lord to me. And I think you might be surprised that just just when you think, you know, there's no one to help me, there's no help to be had, to see the church step up is a really beautiful gift. So I would encourage you, if you're not part of a local church, to to, to attend one, to become a member, to 
um, commit yourself to them and let them commit themselves to you. I, I so agree with you, Kristen. I am floored at the women in the faith communities I've been part of through the years in the various cities in which we've lived. They were the ones who often, when I kind of hit a point of thinking, oh my, <laughs> I need, I need some help. I feel like I'm going under. And sometimes even when I didn't know or didn't have the humility to raise my hand and say, I need some help, I'm going under. The the faith community that I had been so blessed to find myself in and the women in that community who understand that sense of doing all the things and having dreams and having responsibilities and they're only being 24-7 in the day. Those women came alongside me in strength. I was honored to hopefully be able to come alongside other women in that situation, hopefully in strength, that at the times when we can feel our weakest, other people can show up for us in a really powerful way, and then we get to reciprocate. It's something that I don't want people to miss out on. I know church can be messy. I know that you may have had a situation in your life that somebody really disappointed you in a faith community. And yet there is still so much good, so much help, so much healing that can come when you are connected and you are shoulder to shoulder and arm to arm with people who really want to serve in the same kind of way. Such a great reminder. Well, Kristen, tell listeners where they can find out more about you, where they can find the book, Humble Moms, and just get us connected with all the places you are. Yeah, sure. So my website is kristenweatherall.com, and that is uh, probably the best place where you can look at stuff related to the book and and find out where you can get that. Um, I'm also on Instagram, so you can connect with me there. All right. Go find. We'll make sure that gets in the show notes. Rebecca puts those out. Kristen, thank you so much for being with me and helping me explore a little bit further, helping the listener understand a little bit more about this This thing that a lot of us are experiencing, this burnout where we feel disconnected from the things that we really have always loved and want to do, thank you so much for reminding us that sometimes the humility and humbleness of raising our hands, saying we need help and learning to lean on God a little more fully can be just the ticket. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you, Julie. Head over to All Mom Does on the socials. You'll find us at All Mom Does on Instagram and All Mom Does on Facebook. And let us know so far what your favorite episode is when it comes to this series that we're doing on mental health and mental wellness. Would you do that for me? Go check out All Mom Does on the socials and let us know how these episodes are impacting you, who has been the guest who's impacted you the most so far. I would love to hear from you. Also check out those show notes. Rebecca puts those together for us and it's got all the information that you need from this week's episode. I'll see you next time for another incredible installment, another great episode in our series on mental health and mental wellness here on the Almond Does Podcast. (laughs) 